morning. I'm Debbie Cronister. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'm going to show you what I did with February, February, right? February paper pumpkin kit. So if you don't know what this is, it's an amazing kit. I'm going to flip you around so that we can get going and you can see what I have planned for you today. So this is the paper pumpkin kit for February. It's called Sweet Spring Time. And I'm going to show you everything comes in it. This is a paper that comes that shows you what stamps belong in the kit. So later on, when you decide to save this or store it um, for future use, you will have this and you'll know what stamps belong in the kit. Sometimes I go back and pull my things out and use them for um, the uh for other things. And so this is real handy to have. That it comes with this month it comes with some baker's twine and um tear and tape or a little bit of tear and tape. An early espresso stampin' spot. Oh, I should show you the the stamp set, huh? This is the stamp set. Um let's see, get it turned the right way. Yes. So it has a bunny, flowers, a little chick, um happy Easter, spring greetings, and welcome baby. So it's kind of a fun kit, and it, those are all shown on that paper. And then it comes with a package of dimensionals, a few glue dots, and this month it comes with a white bling, if you guys can see that. Okay, so in the kit was um, three of these envelopes that um, are card. I mean, three of these cards that are long cards. They are six and a half approximately, six and a quarter right in there by um, three and a quarter. So there were three of those. I have cut my kit up. So this is what's left of it, guys. Um, actually, this is what's left of a second kit. Um, then there's this, which makes creates a box. We're going to do something different with that. There's a sheet that has wreaths, and this is a frame. And it has the leaves at the bottom. So when you do this, be careful. Your leaves are are attached to the frame if you take yours apart. These are some little stickers, and not stickers, but die cuts that are in the kit, um, a fun kit. Then there's some envelopes. This is one of the envelopes. There, came, there were three in the package. And this is the other one. You can see I demolished that one, didn't I? Um, I have used it in the kit several times, different places. So um, that is the other one and it's vanilla on the other side on the outside um let's see what else oh and then there's some cards and they're just the little rabbit and <coughs> plaid um gingham um cards so let's get busy i'll show you what i did with my kit so the first card i'm going to start with is this one and it's just a simple z fold card so let me find my card here i should have looked at this ahead huh that's a pink one let's just stack those together real quick um i know what that is this I may not have what i need for this um that one and then this one this is the one we're working nope that's not the one we're working on where's the one we're working on I have a box here with has a few extra cards left over in it. Could be this one. If I can't get it open. Let's see. Gee, this is it. Of course, the one I can't get open. Okay, so I have a piece of eight and a half by 11. And I'll put all these measurements on my blog for you. Um, so you'll click the link below and it'll take you to my blog and or above whichever it is in facebook it's above in youtube it's below so um it and if you run into a problem it's stamp with dab real simple okay so i have cut this um from this card you can see i cut that and i'm going to attach that to a piece of fresh freesia that i cut so this the fresh freesia is two inches by four and one eighth so this um card i cut down to one and seven eighths by four uh by by four yes so 
And then I'm just going to attach that to the front left panel. This is probably the easiest card we can make. Um, it's because it's just a Z fold, so it's scored at two and an eighth and four and a quarter. And yet it's just kind of a fun card. Makes a nice, a nice fold. And then I have a piece here that is two and a quarter by four and one eighth. And we're going to attach that to the right panel. Paper pumpkin is a kit that comes can be mailed to your home every month. Or if you want, you can subscribe with me by sending me an email and telling me you want to join, and I'll get back in touch with you, and we'll get you set up to be able to make the alternates that go with paper pumpkin. I typically use a half of a kit um, for the alternates, so you still have a half a kit to create with, um, to create either on your own or create cards with from the cards that are um, that follow the instructions. So um, either way. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive on this, decide where I want it. It's going to be over this way. And I am using green glue on this. That's going to hang out over it. And then from my kit, I am going to get one of my little tags. Where did I put them? There they are. So I'm going to take one of these little tags out of here. I feel like this thing is too low this morning. So I'm going to take it up a little bit. Just give me a second here. So you guys got a better shot. And I don't feel like I'm working in your faces. Okay. That's better. And then in from my kit, I'm going to get my stamps, which are I have to find my kit. My other kit. Okay, it's this one. And these are my stamps. I have several kits here right now. So okay. And we're going to stamp the Happy Easter. <laughs> that thing is curling. And Memento, Black Memento. And my little curl is going to go this way. Just like that. Love photopolymer because I could see where I wanted to put it. Okay, and then I'm just going to use, and I um, am substituting and using my blocks. When you get your first paper pumpkin, you will get a uh, paper pumpkin block. It's not this one. It's not the ergonomic. It's flat. It's really a uh, sweet block. And so um, you will, um, I'm substituting my blocks, the Stampin' Up! ergonomic blocks for those. And I'm using a regular Versamark pad. So you could do the, I mean, not Versamark, um, Tuxedo Black Memento pad. Um, you could do this in any black ink because we're not coloring it. So, or you could do it in the brown that came in your kit in the early espresso. Okay, so I'm just going to attach this right here. Oops, I put a dimensional over there, is that going to reach? We're going to make it reach. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a little bunny out of here. Him and his little friend. And those, that's going to go right down here. And I'm going to put that on dimensionals also. And he's going all the way on, so I'm okay. Just like that. Okay, there's one more thing that I want to show you that I know I have it. Oh, here. Okay. So this is a ribbon that we no longer carry, unfortunately, but I want to show you, you can do this with any ribbon. So what I did is I took and I cut a piece of ribbon. This is approximately 10 inches 
and I cut off this side. So I took my scissors and I just cut right up that side all the way up. And then I shredded this a little bit at the top just like that so that I would be able to grab those other ones. I'm going to pull these out. But when I do, I want them to stay. I don't want them to jam up and because it will get all jammed up and be too hard to, it'll break. I mean, they'll break is what will happen. So you want to keep them separate, and it takes a little bit to work on it at the beginning. It, this is probably the hardest row to do, This the last row, the last bunch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this ribbon with my left hand and pull these with my right hand. Look, at see how that's happening? It's pulling off there. So I want to keep them together. And I'm going to pull this all the way off, all the way down. It's a little tricky, but once you've done it a few times, it gets easier. You see, I've got one stray way out here in the front area. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now I have all these together, and I'm just going to tie a bow. So I have cut more than what I need longer than what I need because this is what gets tricky is tying the bow. So I'm just going to tie my bow like I would normally tie it. If you do rabbit ears, I don't know how this will work. I just know that it works this way. <laughs> so, and I have this really pretty little dainty bow. And I'm going to trim off the tails because they're way too long, of course. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's just such a pretty little bow, and I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to put it on with a glue dot. And I am, I always tell my girls, don't touch your glue dots because it messes them up. This is the one time you might, you're going to have to touch your glue dots. So I'm going to use my take your pick tool and see if I can roll this a little bit and push it underneath before I lift it up. So I do want to. Roll it a little bit just because otherwise it will be the glue will stick to everything. So that is my first card. So I hope I'm staying on screen. Is that better, guys? I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> okay, that's card number one. So card number two. Let's put that one aside. Oh, I already had one tied. Look at that. I already had a pretty little one there for me. Okay. So card number two, let's do this one. And this one, um, <laughs> oh, this one uses a different technique. So for this one, I used the... Um, Saran wrap technique for the top portion of it. I'm not going to do that today. I will wait and do that on another video on how to do that. Um, so we're going to just leave that plain for today. So let me find my card here. And I have five cards to show you today or four cards and a, a fun, a fun thing. Okay, and I am going to need to grab. So this is, once again, cut at 8.5 by 5.5 and, and scored at 2 and 1 eighth and 4 and a quarter. So, and like I said, I'll put all those measurements on my blog for you. These two are going to go on the inside of the card. So we're not going to do that yet because I'm going to run it through the die cut machine. So let's let's take care of this part first. So... I have, I believe, one strip left. I do. So this is my envelope, and I have cut it down the sides, and then this is from the inside. You can see mine is going to have a score line on it, but I'm not worried about it. You can cut yours so it doesn't have that by just cutting that section of the envelope. So I'm going to cut this to two and one eighth inches by five and a half we're going to put it right there on the bottom half of our card 
So this is going to go right in here, and you want to do this before you cut it. So um, still have some of those little uh, tails here from my bow that I cut. And they're getting in my glue. <laughs> okay. All right. I want to touch this right onto here. I should have done this in a liquid glue so I could adjust it. Okay, now I'm going to take this over to the die cut machine and I am going to cut a half circle here. Let me grab my die and I'll show you. So what I did is I took my die and I placed it on a ruler and I marked that is exactly half um, of my, it's not, oh, that's very interesting. When I go between there and there, I'd say half is lower. Oh, well, we're going to use those mark, those score, those lines. And I'm going to place this right here on the edge. So what I did is I determined half. I think I measured it, actually. I determined half. And then I just drew a line across it. So let me go do that. So I'm opening it up flat so that that score line is right on the um, those two marks on my die so that it will cut. So this is what I've done. So I have marked that right on my score line, opened it up flat, and ran it through the machine, and this is what I have. So it cuts and lines up perfectly. So. Um, and this you could use for something else. I'm not sure what yet, but <laughs> I haven't decided what. Okay, so now this is, we're going to decorate. So we're going to grab a wreath, one of our wreaths from the kit, which are, I'll probably put them back. Let's see. Yeah, I did. I put them back in. Okay, so this one, I'm just going to pop this out. You want to keep all the other things that are in there. And I'm going to pop this out, including your little flowers here. Okay, and I'm going to attach this wreath this direction. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around here. I found that it's easier to put it there because I'm not sure where it's going to touch and it's got to touch in some of these areas, right? And just a little bit on each edge. Let's see, I want to go this way. I just want to attach that right there. Oh, wait a minute. No, don't do that. <laughs> You're not going to attach to the top half of this. Whoa. Okay. Let's see if I have glue on there. Good way to learn. Um, <laughs> hard way to learn. Okay. So you're only going to attach it to the bottom portion. Okay. Now, you see what I've done? I have messed up and put glue in the wrong places. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with a little, um, this is the embossing buddy. And just put a little bit there. I didn't, it didn't attach there for some reason, but I'll clean it. And I'm just going to powder that and that's going to take the stickiness off of there. Okay. So tip, whenever you put it on the wrong place, use your embossing buddy afterwards and it'll kind of Absorb that, especially if it's someplace that it's not really going to show. And it's not in this case, and I didn't get any on there hardly. So I'm good. Okay, only glue it at the bottom portion, okay? The top isn't getting glued. Okay, now, so for the, um, the flowers, 
let's grab some Stampin' Blends, and I used Granny Apple Green and Daffodil Delight for those. So let's color those up. And I did something different on this one. I colored just the center part. And then just put some lines coming out. This looks like Lemon Lolly. It is Lemon Lolly. I grabbed the wrong one. Um, yeah, let me get a daffodil because that's a different color. And it looks like it. Let's see. Here's daffodil. Definitely better. Good thing is I grabbed the lighter one first. Okay. And we have three of those little flowers. And this is Daffodil Dark that I'm using, just FYI. Okay, and then is the tip on those. Okay, and then I'm going to use Grainy Apple Green Light for my stem. Sorry, you guys can speed this video up or skip past this. <laughs> you don't need to watch me color, right? And I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I'm not doing a great job because um, I am trying to hurry. The sideways. Those stems are a little challenging to color fast. <laughs> They're not hard to color, just fast. Okay. Then I t grabbed some um, Rink of Stella. Rink of Stella is not available right now, unfortunately, guys. But for those who already own one, I just put a little Rink of Stella on here. I very seldom squirt out my Rink of Stella because I like it super light. And it still shows beautifully, even if you don't squirt it out. So once you've done the first one, I pretty much don't do it again. Oh, I also put Rink of Stella on my bow. I did not put it on the stems, but I did put it on my bow. The bow is cut from, oh, I'm going to have to look. I'm pretty sure I wrote it down somewhere. Um, it'll be on my instructions. <laughs> How about that? That's always a good excuse. Um, so it will be on the instructions, though. I, um, one of our current, it's one of our current die sets. So. Get that a little bit more color. Okay, now I took the three flowers and I put them together using glue dots. So flower number one, I'm going to go in the front. And I'm going to use my take your pick tool, which I love. It's and then flower number two, it's a glue dot. On the back. And that one's going to go there. So two of these are going to hold the weight. Let's see, the front one, front one should be in the middle, should be a little bit lower. But those two are going to hold the weight of the um, card. Okay, so for these, I'm going to put a mini dimensional on the back. And that's going to help hold my card when it's standing open. And I like my tweezers for my mini dimensionals. And I'm just going to close. Oops, wait a minute. We got to put some layers in here first. So I have taken a piece of garden, uh, granny apple green and a basic white. And I'm going to attach those two together, maybe. I can pull that little bit of glue out that's in there that is holding everything up. No. It is stuck in there, isn't it? <laughs> maybe we need to move on. Okay. <laughs> we'll use our stamp and seal.
Okay. And put that together, just like that. And put this on the inside. Where's my mat? Right next to me, where it should be. Are we empty? We are empty, of course. <laughs> I didn't plan for it to be empty. Let me grab a new stamp and seal. A refill. It's just going to be one of those mornings, huh? Okay, and I'm just going to trim that open. And take it out and put it in the case. And I always like to clean off my case a little because there's a little sticky, a little gooey. So let's clean that off first. And get as much of it <laughs> as we can. It's stuck to my fingers now. But clean off. Just, it'll make it run smoother. And one side has the little, um, knob, the little thing sticking up that you attach it to. And I still have a little bit on the bottom here. Okay, now we should be ready to go. A nice fresh stamp and seal always works beautifully. And Just going to put that right in there, centered. Okay, now we're going to put, we're going to fold this down. And I'm going to put my flowers in through the opening. And I am going to use a glue dot to attach them. And the, take the papers off of the dimensionals. And they'll stick right here. Because I need something to hold it up. So my door, my little flap will stay up. Okay, let's see if I can get that off, just like that. Bring that up. And there we are. So these two flowers are going to hold it up. Um, just like that. Okay. Get back up this way. All right, now I'm going to put my bow on there. And I'm going to do that with a glue dot also. There we go. Now, the only thing we have left is our greeting. And I should have done my greeting before. I think I'll put a dimensional on the back of that center flower. Because he wants to pop up there. And I want to keep him from jumping around. So I think I'll just put one there. Otherwise, it's very likely to get pulled off. And he's kind of dimensional on top. That's perfect. And then that way he stays, and there he stays, and it doesn't get knocked off um, when it's coming down. Okay. Let's get our greeting. So the greeting is stamped on a piece of basic white, just a scrap, and it's springtime greetings is what it says. And so here we are, and let me grab a block just like that. And I'm going to go right down here because I'm going to fussy cut this. So now I've got a head start on it because my bottom is, the bottom is straight. So I just come around like this. So something I learned after I became a Stampin' Up! demonstrator was how to cut. <laughs> because I guess I didn't learn it in kindergarten like everybody else did. That if you turn the paper, you have nice smooth cuts. Um, but my upline was the one who taught me that. So um, you turn the paper rather than the scissors. This is too big of a piece here. I'm going to cut that off and just get rid of it. And so then 
you because you can be turning the paper the whole time you're cutting. And that was an easy greeting to cut. Yeah, I'm going to go across the bottom because it's a little wide. All right, and that's going to go on with dimensionals. See how easy that was and how nice it came out? Okay, so we're going to put that on with dimensionals. And we could go with uh, a regular dimensional this time. For this section, at least. And one here. That's pretty close. <laughs> that's a little overkill. And then... For my last one, I'm going to put a mini on there just to make sure it gets supported. I probably only needed a large, one large one and one mini, but we are there. Okay. And then I'm just going to put this right across here. Springtime greeting. Okay. And add my bow. The bow is, I think it's a lemon lime twist. Um, and it comes in a kit with a pink, if I remember right. The two of them come together. But this looks like a perfect bow to go on there. There we are. Like we need another bow. Okay, so that is the second card. Okay, for my third card, I think we'll do the berry. This is berry burst. And let me show you the card. It is this one. This is an old standby format for me. Um, I started doing this years ago, and it's just always been a good, um, oh, I don't know what to do. It's a good one for that. Um, okay. And for the inside, I have a little flower that's colored and put in there. Okay. So let's get that one going. This one, I took the frame. I have one here. You just find that. Whoops, I'm dropping stuff on the table. No, I thought I had some still left. Maybe I didn't. I didn't. Okay, I took this frame and punched it out. Just like that. So when you do this, remember your, um, some of your leaves here are going to stay and some of it's going to go <clears throat> so it's a little tricky but you don't want to rip those off <clears throat> sorry i got a frog in my throat all of a sudden <clears throat> okay <clears throat> and, oh what did i just throw in the trash um yeah that was trash <laughs> That's the thing with the paper pumpkin. There's always something you can use out of it or do out of it. Okay, so I'm going to take out these little corners. Maybe. They do pull out. And this little one down here. And there's another one here in the corner. <coughs> okay, then I'm going to take my paper trimmer. And I'm going to cut this down to four inches. So I'm going to put the bottom of the frame down here, and I'm going to cut it at four inches. It's really delicate, so um, <clears throat> you want to be careful with it. It will tear very easily. You want to make sure your blade is sharp. Okay, so then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to glue this right onto there. So for this, I am going to use just a little bit of glue. Okay, and I'm going to put that right on top of that, going right to the top. So now we have a four inch frame, which is what we need. Okay, so my paper here is cut at 11 <coughs> by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half and four and a half, I think. No, four and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to attach. Oh, I already had a frame in here. 
all cut and everything. Okay, that's all right. So I'm going to attach my um, designer series paper here to the piece of white that I have. Grab my, my silicone mat. This thing works better on a silicone mat, I'll tell you that. I don't know why, but it just does. I think it gives it the texture that it needs underneath to roll roll, roll well. So, and I'm going to put that just leaving a little edge around. And then I'm going to attach this to the front here. Now, typically, we wrap a ribbon around here or something like that. Um, in this case, I have not. So I'm going to attach. Let's see, this is going to get attached to this. So first, I'm just going to put this onto the front of my card. like that and then for this this is so delicate I wanted to pop it up but I knew I couldn't so where's my take your pick tool so I'm going to use glue dots and those glue dots leave a little bit of space in between and I'm going to kind of twist them around too just to make it a little bit higher so when you put them on It'll stick up. That's what I want. So I'm just going to put one on each edge. One in the middle here and then one on each corner. I'm hoping that'll be enough. <clears throat> you might want to put more on. So see how they're balling up and everything? That's okay. We want that because <laughs> it's going to give it some height. We don't want a nice flat glue dot. Oops, that one's going to come out pretty flat. <laughs> so you can either up, 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 what's the word that I want? You can either decorate them more or, or design further, or you can actually do these cards as they're designed. So the instructions are in the kit, so you can do them exactly as designed, and they're adorable. Um, Stampin' Up! has greatly improved paper pumpkins, so if you took it a long time ago, you might want to consider it again, um, because it, it has improved tremendously. Okay, so there is my little frame around my bunny. I have a piece of ribbon in here, that same ribbon that I took apart and made that little skinny bow out of. And I'm just going to tie a nice little knot here and trim my tails. And attach that with a glue dot. Well, we are going through the glue dots today, huh? Whoops, let's turn it around that way. My tails want to go that way. Okay. Now, for the inside, I have... Oh, let's glue this closed first before we go any further. So normally, we wrap a ribbon around here. And so we leave it open and we attach it there in the inside, but I'm not going to wrap the ribbon this time. I'm just going to put my bow there. My bow is a little bit big. Feels a little big to me. Now it's going to get smaller because I cut it wrong. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so for my inside, I'm going to attach these together. And then these are going to go on the inside of the card. Just like that. Just leaving that little bit of an edge all the way around. 
Okay, I have a flower here, and I'm going to color my flower. Unfortunately, all my Stampin' Blends are packed in kits that are ready to go. So we're just going to color this flower the same way I did. I'm just going to leave it white, actually. Um, on the rest of the flower, give it a yellow tip. And I'm just going to give it some green on its leaves. And we're going to attach that to the inside here. And for that, I'm going to use a little bit of green glue. I mean, yeah, green glue. Okay. And just put it right in there. Now, for the front of my um, my flowers here, I did take some of these, which were in the centers of those wreaths that I took out. That one. And this one we'll put there. And we'll grab one more that is this style. Whoops, just one. And I'm going to color those with Wink of Stella first. And then I'm going to pop them up on a dimensional. And this one, I didn't even put a greeting on. You could put any greeting that you want on it. Um, this one definitely looks like a happy Easter with the bunnies, unless you did it as a baby card. I guess you could. All right, there we go. That's card number three. Okay, so my fourth card is the pink one. And I should have done more of this before I started, but I didn't, guys. So I'm going to do the majority of it, but I'm not going to do the whole thing because you guys don't want to sit here and watch me sew this. So what I did is I'll show you what I did. Um, in the kit, I attached, I bought some um, needles that are blunt tip. And once again, I shredded the the ribbon. So the ribbon that I used was the herringbone ribbon. It's like five eighths inch wide, I think. Um, it is available for purchase through Stampin' Up. You could do a lot of things with this. You could color this, and you could. Um, so this is the ribbon. It looks like a herringbone to me. It's called herringbone. Um, and so I did the same thing. I cut up the side and then just started pulling it apart. And so I ended up with this real fine um, ribbon, and I just attached it to something for my kits so my gals would have it. I also did a, a little bow here for them to be able to put on top of it. So what you're going to do is you're going to start. I started on the right-hand side about halfway up and started out like this. Left enough to tie a bow. Whoops, I need an uneven here. So this is uneven when I'm sewing. So I just left enough to tie a bow and then just went up and down. Just pulling it taut. So I need a little more for my bow. This is the time to adjust it. And I, I cut, gosh, I don't remember what I cut now. It was, let's see if I can figure it out. Okay, so that's 13 inches there. 26 inches. About 20. Okay, so this is part two of Paper Pumpkin. And uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I One of my sister's demonstrators um, came by to pick up something. And so I 
needed to take a break there. And it gave me a chance to get this stitched for you so you could see what it looks like. So card number four is what we're on. And what I did is I cut this with everyday details dies. And so I just started here with my needle and I, and the, th and the ribbon, the ribbon came from, um, it was a ribbon that I had split, the herringbone ribbon, and I split it off and created these um, threads. And so then I just started here and just stitched all the way around. I did it on the right because that's where I want to tie my bow until I came all the way to the end. And now I have these two tails here where I can tie my bow. So let me just do that real quick. I think I'm I'm thirsty today. Uh my hands are shaking like a leaf. And I that's usually a sign that I need some water. So uh I'm okay. I just need some water. And of course it's in the other room. So there we go. I'm gonna turn this around this way because I want my bow to be going this direction. And getting all those little strings is the challenge. And then tying the bow with this little skinny thread. <laughs> and there we are. Oh, that came out really messy. Sorry, guys. It's actually easier to do if it's attached to something. Um, Because then it's weighted down. Whoops, going the wrong way. So this is where the challenge comes in. Is oh there, that came through better. Okay. <laughs> Except it's crooked. Okay, we're going to leave it crooked. It's going to work better that way actually. So then I'm going to trim the tails on it. There we go. It kind of looks better that way, just kind of going up and down the side. All right, and then I have this pretty little bow that I made with the other ribbon, which is very, very careful. You have to tie very, very carefully. Um, and so that one we're going to attach to the top of this. Oops. Didn't get it. Okay. And it just makes for a gorgeous little bow there. And I might need to trim off those tails as well. Yeah. So let's get those trimmed off. So we don't have too much hanging down here because there's a ton of it right now. And the more strands you have in your ribbon, the more, of course, the thicker it's going to be and everything. So, um, okay, let's get rid of all of this excess stuff here. I have too much stuff on my table. I can't tell what's what. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay, let's get our card finished now. Okay, so then I took the Happy Easter stamp, which we have on a block here, and I'm going to use my frame just to get an idea of where I want to stamp this. So it is pretty much this, almost the same size the two papers are. So let's ink that up, and I'm going to ink it up in Black Memento, Tuxedo Black Memento, and just stamp it right up in here. It doesn't have to be at the very top. I just want it to be straight. I'm going to pull this off because I think that's um, hindering my placement here, and I think it's crooked on my block, which is also creating an issue. Okay. <laughs> it still looks crooked to me. Oh, it came out good. <laughs> okay. At least it looks good on there. What's going to happen when we put the frame on? Well, it's a little downhill, but it's okay. All right. So I'm going to attach this. This is the front of, I mean, the back of one of these cards. I cut it um, down to... These two go on the inside. I cut it down so that it would fit on the front of my card. So more than likely, it's five and a quarter by four. Uh, 
Okay, and then I'm going to put this on, just centering it. Okay, I think it is going down here, guys. It's okay. I'm going to put this on, but we're going to do this with dimensionals. I'm going to wipe this off here before I end up with it all over something. There we go. And my chamois here somewhere. I just didn't wet it this morning or I would have used it. Um, but the chamois has a tendency to leave it a little bit damp. So I haven't mastered that yet. I'm sure it, there's a way to do it. Okay, so then I'm just going to put my dimensionals going around here. Just like that. And I want to move those ribbon ends out. And I want it to stay popped up, so I'm going to put quite a few dimensionals on here. I mean, you could even put more, but I won't do that. I won't get carried away. Oops, and I need one more over here. Okay, Let's pull those papers off. All right, I think they're all off. Let's see, yeah. Okay, and I'm just going to attach this here, and I do also want to make sure that that's centered and that the white is covered. Okay, and then I'm going to add my little bunny on here. Let's get one, another one of him. Pop him out of there. And for this one, because this is popped up, I'm going to go flat on this area, but I'm going to put a dimensional on the inside to hold this head up. So let's go ahead and put some glue on here. A little bunny bottom and across here. And just like that. He looks like he's looking in or out the window. Did I pull I didn't pull the paper off there? Let's try that. That works better when you take it off. Okay. And there is card number four. Kind of fun. Oops, I haven't done the inside. Let's put the inside together. Now, you know, if you were going to stamp a greeting in here, you would do it before you put it together. It's always the best way to do it. And then that way, if you mess up, you can always flip it over and go to the other side. Right? Okay. And this goes on the inside here of our card. And there we are. All done. Now, you could add some bling to this, of course. Bling would be good in here, in these areas. Um, and you do have some in your kit that you can use. Okay, so for the last one, this one's fun, but it's um, a little more challenging. So um, some of my gals in my paper pumpkin group would rather have cards than 3D items, even though it is Easter and um, they just don't have any little ones in their lives. So... This um, this is the this. Okay, that's what I started with. And I cut the pink strip off. And I cut this one down. And I cut this one so it's four and a quarter. I mean four and a half. So let me just double check that because I think on some of those I forgot to do that. So if we go four and a half, perfect. So that one's cut at four and a half, and the other three are cut at the same height. You want to know what we're going to make? Let me see if I can find it. We're going to make a box card. Um, gosh, where did my box card go? Uh-oh. Well, you might have to just watch and see, because I'm not seeing it anywhere. Oh, here it is. There it is. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? It's just a little card that flattens down to go in an envelope. It does not fit in one of our standard size envelopes, unfortunately, because our envelopes are four and they're designed for the four and a quarter. And this is a little taller and I didn't want to go any shorter on it. Um, so, I mean, I guess you could, but then you don't see the happy Easter over top. See, 
So um, that wouldn't see this one barely shows as it is. I would have liked to have put it up a little higher. But um, anyway, so you'll have to make a box, um, an envelope. And there are zillions of videos out there. Maybe I'll do a video on how to make an envelope. Um, I And I have an envelope punch board, which I love. And so that makes it much easier. Okay, so I'm just going to, whoops, we're not going to bend the tall one, number one rule. Do not bend the tall one. You're going to bend the other ones over, and that is where you're going to put your um, your pink. So I took the, after I cut the pink off, I cut it down, and I cut it on the score lines, which was perfect. So I'm going to attach those to there to start with. So. Let's just put some adhesive on here. And I think I want to use my my uh okay. So this one's a side. So what I did is I made sure this one had the V on it. Not that it makes any difference because they all have something on them, but I did the um the ones without it for the front, and I know it's missing um. It's missing a hole here or a thing. So I would go ahead and punch them both out in that case. Um, this one I'm just going to attach. Come on. Okay, it started working. And <laughs> okay, stamp and seal. Come on, let's not fight. <laughs> let's grab the mat. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to attach. This one, which has two holes in it, but we're going to put a ribbon through that so we can punch those out. And I'm just going to punch all my holes out since um, the two on the other side fell out. Come on. <laughs> and I'm just attaching these. It looks like they're, it's attached on the inside is kind of how it looks. That's going to go on the back, and this one's going to go on the other side, and let's punch that one out. I'm not going to punch out the back one. I want my back ones in there. Okay. Now we're going to attach this one here. And this is the back. And so if your back seems weak, you could put a piece of paper here before you put this on. All right. Now that is gives us this look. So our outside is like that. Okay, now. Okay, so now I've got to figure out where my front is. Okay, so I'm going to fold my box up. And this panel is my front. So when I attach these strips, these strips, I'll give you the measurements for, but they're... Um, they're going to go in here. So when I attach them, they're going to go to start out with, they're going to go on one of these sides. So I'm going to attach the first one. I'm going to put some adhesive and it's going to get attached to this side right here. That's my center. Okay. And it's getting attached that direction. Okay. Then my second one, and these have a score line here and that's why they are folding. The second one is going to go, and normally we would butt the second one right up against the first one this way. Um, but for this one, I only did three, so we're going to spread them out. So there's number two. And number three is going to go right here. I'm going to leave a little room between that and the back because I did put a little decoration on the back. Okay, so if you close it up, they should be going right across. This is my front. This is my back because it's not staying up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's not, mine's not staying up because I've been it. Um, I should have put another piece of paper in there to hold it up. But anyway, that's my back and this is my front. Now we're going to go ahead and decorate these and we're going to decorate them on the front. So make sure that they're laying this way when you decorate. So I'm going to start with my back one. The very back here is going to get two leaves. So I'm just going to use a ton of glue dots. 
is I'm going to attach one leaf to each edge over here. Where's my paper pick tool? I don't want to tear my leaves. The leaves were cut with the dies that were in, um, that were available for this first three months of paper pumpkin. Um, so, I have some extra leaves here I cut. And I used the envelope to cut the leaves. Um, one of them was cut with grainy apple green. And the other one was cut with the, um, from the envelope. See that one? Variegated. So that one was cut from the envelope. Okay. And then I'm going to lay this one down and I'm going to decorate it. And this one I used a wreath. So let me find my wreath. I have one left here. So I used the wreath and I cut it up. I know it seems horrible, huh? <laughs> okay, so what I did is I came in and I just cut right around this little flower. And then here I cut just around here. So there's one piece. And then I kept the daisies on there and cut around this flower. And cut it off here. So that way I'm going to get four pieces. This one, I'm just going to cut those two little leaves off. I should cut it rounded, huh? Not that anybody's going to really see that part, but okay. Okay, so I started out with this one, and I put on a leaf in the middle. Like I said, we're going to use a lot of glue dots on this one. You will run out of glue dots <laughs> if you use the Stampin' Up, the ones that came in the kit. So um, I've got two take-your-pick tools here, and I can't find one. <laughs> okay, there. And then I'm going to put the flowers on this one. So I want them to kind of stick up quite a bit. So I am going to go there. And my other flower here, same thing on that one. I want it to stick up. So there we go. Okay, now I'm going to close this one down and then kind of going to come in with a variegated, a green leaf to start with. And then a flower, nope, a variegated leaf. over here. So I kind of switched them. This one's got it in the middle. And then my two flowers. So I put this one over here this time. And this one over here. And I think I put another leaf in the middle. I'm going to, just because I have them. Okay. Kind of tuck it back in. Okay. And then for the final one, I used the dye to cut the two flowers. And we're going to color those. To start with.
Oops, I need the other end, don't I? color those with a little bit of the grainy apple green, huh? Um, okay, so I'm going to put in two variegated on this one because I have a solids in that one. So, guys, when you do this, remember that end tab is going to fold under. I think I goofed on this one. I did. So I need to move this over because I missed that on this one. That one I did okay, but this one I forgot. Okay, let's see if I can pull these off. They're glue dots. They should come off, right? And pull this one off without tearing him up. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pull this one off, period. Because I don't really need him now. I had put an extra one on there because I thought that I was going to be short and empty there. But I'm just going to go there. Okay. Now let's get our two little... Leaves on here. Let's use him on here. Is he still in good condition? And then I'm going to put my two little flowers on here. All right. Okay. Okay. That is it. Okay, now we're going to, should have folded those and then I would have known not to put anything there. Okay. Now we're going to close that up. Let's get rid of all this. We use so many glue dots, I have a huge tail on it today. Okay, so we're going to fold this over. And we're going to, we're going to put some adhesive on here to start with. This is the um, little half-inch strip for sealing the box. And I'm going to put adhesive on each of these. So let's just... Go like that. You can see what's going to happen, right? Two and three. I'm just going to go. Nope, I can't go that way. I was going to go right across there, but I can't go that way. Okay, so I'm going to fold this over, and I'm going to fold this over. And that's going to close it all up, and it's going to attach all those ends. A little circle there. And there is our card. Is that adorable? Except for I got stuck here. Uh, whoops, my leaf is too high. Did I stick that on? No, I stuck it on there. Okay, leave it alone, Debbie. <laughs> okay. There it is. That one's a little too close, so you got to be careful because if you get too close to the edges, then they do get squished in that fold. So when you fold it closed to put it in the bo in an envelope, you're going to want to fold it to the left because it's um, going to have the little tag out here. So let's get our little tag done. And we're going to stamp Happy Easter on this one again. And this one is in tuxedo black. 
no bow on this one, although you always could. Um, and then I'm just going to attach this. This part is going to go down, so I'm going to put adhesive on this one. And I'm going to cover up those holes up there pretty much. So if you end up with holes, this is a good thing to cover it. So there we are, guys. That is card number. Oops, no, we haven't finished. We have to put a little bunny on the front. And that will cover up the holes. Oh, nope, we're not worried about the holes here. So um, I'm going to put that flat since we have so much dimension already. So let's put him on there. Be careful about gluing his ears. Do not glue his ears because um, they're going to stick up. And then putting him just right on the score line there. And then I have a piece of the green uh, lemon lime twist ribbon. Somehow I got a glue, glue on me. Gee, I can't imagine how that would happen. Okay, so lemon lime twist in here. And we're going to tie a bow with that. And then I have so many of those little flowers left over that I decided to put some on the side. Okay. <clears throat> Get a trim. My scissors are healthy. They're awful like glue and strings. Okay, so some of these little flowers here. So I put one flat and one popped up. I need one more. And want this one. Oops. The two here? No. Okay. So I didn't put any Wink Costello on here, guys. <laughs> Which is really unusual for me. And I'm just going to, and I could use those to cover those little holes. I could put a ribbon in the hole. I'm not going to worry about those little holes. They're kind of cute. And then this one gets popped up. And this one gets popped up. And you could put a ribbon in there. You could put, let's see, what else could we do? You guys come up with great ideas. Come on. You can do it. I know it. Okay. There we are. And there is our garden box. And it goes together this way and folds and goes into an envelope. Okay. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. If you're interested in subscribing to my paper pumpkin kit, you can go to stampwithdeb.com and click on uh, my email and you can send me an email there. Contact and send me an email and let me know. The cost is $30 a month and that includes everything that you, all the additional products that you will need as well as your paper pumpkin kit. Your kit will ship to me and I will make the modifications and ship it off to you. Um, so there will be an additional shipping fee unless you live close by me and you want to come by and pick it up. So, But thanks so much for joining me today, and you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.